Hey dolls and gents, good evening. How you all doing today? I hope you're having a great day. Hope you've had a great day. Your day is coming to an end. It's winding down. Let's get on in this word tonight. Tonight we are talking about the desperation of faith. The desperation of faith. Let's pray. And then let's get on into this word. I have been so full all day. Let me tell y'all, since Sunday morning, I went to Miracle Life Church and it was a blessing to my soul. Um, <clears throat> the presence of the Lord is truly in that place. And it was so good to my spirit. All right, let's pray. Dear Heavenly Father, we thank you for this day, God. We thank you for your grace and we thank you for your mercy. We thank you that you are good and that you do all things well. We thank you that we can stand on your word. Lord, we thank you that you have given us a guidebook how to live this life. And I thank you for the people that joined this broadcast. Lord, let them receive a blessing in their spirit today. God, continue to grow them in their faith, oh God. Continue to watch over them, be with them. Keep them safe from all hurt, harm, danger, pain, and trouble. Lord, remind them that your word says that you would never leave them nor forsake them, oh God. Help them to remember that in the tough situations that it's working for them, Lord. Speak to me, through me, and for me on tonight, God. I ask forgiveness of my sins of omission and my sins of commission, God. Continue to purge me and prune me and use me as a vessel. In Jesus' holy and most precious name, I pray. Amen. All right, so we are talking about the desperation of faith. That is our topic tonight. You know, it takes me to a place in my deliverance um, when I was sick and I was paralyzed on my whole left side and I lost my salon and so on and so forth and it was a three year struggle it was a three year battle and it got to a place where I went to all the doctors and I had been to all the different places and all the different people and nobody could figure out what was wrong and so I, I began to believe God differently I began to tap in and to want to understand him on a different level. And so I laid hands on myself and I prayed and I believed that the words I was speaking were going to come to pass. I believed in the God that I read about. I believed in the God that I go to church on Sunday and worship. Sometimes we don't believe. That is what I have figured out. So many people have been to church Sunday after Sunday after Sunday, but they truly don't believe because when you believe, you respond differently. So a little bit later on, I was sharing my testimony with someone and they told me, you know, that's ignorant to lay hands on yourself. And I said, no, baby, that ain't ignorant. That's out of desperation. It came from out of a desperate place. And it reminded me of the woman with the issue of blood. She pressed her way through the crowd, crawled on her knees. She was desperate for an answer. She was desperate for some relief. When you get desperate, when you got to the place where you've tried every other thing, God responds to that desperation because he knows that you are truly at your wit's end at this point. But we have to believe. Um, the first thing that we have to do when we get to that desperate place is enter into prayer with the Lord. We have to enter into prayer. Philippians 4 and 6. Let's go to Philippians 4 and 6. Prayer is so important. Prayer is only honest conversation with the Lord. That's all it is. So many times we are handicapped in these churches when people teach us. Stay on in the room then. I'm glad that you tuned into this broadcast because that's what we're talking about tonight. Um, people teach us in churches that you have to have someone to pray for you. But let me tell you something. You might be in a situation in the midnight hour and the deacon might not be there. And the prayer warriors may not be there. You have to know how to tap in for yourself. You have to know how to call on the Lord for yourself. I teach my children that at a young age, you have to know how to tap into the Spirit of God and to call heaven to earth. You have to know how to do that in tough situations or you will struggle in your faith. 
but I pray that your faith doesn't fail you in this next season. I pray that when those tests come, when the enemy comes and stands up against you, I pray that your faith doesn't fail. Philippians 4 and 6 teaches us how to, to respond to uncomfortable situations, to tough situations. It says, don't worry. Okay. Another translation says, worry about nothing. I'm reading from the New Living Translation. It says, don't worry about anything. You have to learn to actually believe the Bible that you read. You have to actually learn to be a doer of the Word of God. You cannot read these scriptures and just read them loosely. The Bible says, don't worry. Don't worry. If it says it in the Word, you have to actually access it in your spirit. The Word has to become your flesh. Don't worry about anything. That means do not worry about your children when they're doing the wrong thing. Do not worry about a bad report from the doctor. Do not worry about that bill that came in because worrying is not going to fix it. At the end of the day, stress doesn't do nothing but tear your body down. Give you headaches and high blood pressure and so on and so forth. Worry about nothing. We got to get that. That is the first step. It's better than Xanax. Philippians 4, 6, and 7 is better than Xanax when you get it and apply it. Worry about nothing. Instead, pray about everything. Okay? I, I, I wrestle sometimes. I, I'm tickled because I pray about everything for real. Like, it tickles me. I'm like, Lord, I just literally pray about everything. But that's what the Word of God says. Thank you, Lord, because we have to remember that this battle is not against flesh and blood. Okay, it's not a bit against the people. It's not against the people that we see with our eyes. It's against, it's a sport, spiritual warfare. It's against the spirit that lives in me, the spirit of God, and the spirit of the enemy that lives in the world. When you understand that, first of all, you fight differently. Okay, the weapons of our warfare are not carnal. They are spiritual. Okay, so we worry about nothing and we pray about everything. We give it to the Lord. Instead of ca calling on the Lord, sometimes our prayers are not quite prayers. They are, um, I can't think of a word right now. But this is what I want you to understand about prayer. Okay, if you don't believe it going in, you might as well not pray. Because you have to literally believe what you're getting ready to put at the throne of God. You have to believe that he is not a man that he shall lie, nor the son of man that he shall repent. So you have to believe the things that you are getting ready to lay before his throne. God, I trust you with my life. The first thing that I do when I'm praying, I begin to exalt the Lord because I want to get into that holy place. And when I'm trying to do that, I have to go up. Okay, I have to adjust my focus. That is how you worry about nothing. You adjust your focus. Okay, the bills are here. The craziness is here. But God is higher. So I want to look up unto the hills from which cometh my help. I want to pray. I want to begin to get rise my spirit higher. I want to tell the Lord who he is to me. Dear Heavenly Father, I thank you for today. I thank you that you are good and that you are God. I thank you that you are with me. Because when you give the Lord back his word, he responds. That is the call of response to faith okay god i know that you said that you never leave me nor forsake me god even though it's tough right now even though it's hard right now i mean you have to begin to tap into the spirit of god no matter what is going on around you worry about nothing pray about everything enter into his gates with thanksgiving so when you're entering to into the gates of the lord when you're crossing over when you're reaching higher in the spirit of the lord and you're coming from the problem area and you're looking higher then you have to enter into his gates okay the gates is right there in between the problems and the answer come on in the room the problems and the answer when you enter into his gates enter in with thanksgiving thank you god that you are good thank you for waking me up this morning thank you that i'm clothed in my right mind thank you that my children are alive and well all these shootings are going on all around us thank you that these children are even home to get on my nerves thank you that i feel like i don't have enough food on the table god but thank you that it's a, that the children are sitting around the table and they hungry thank you god that they are not in the hospital today thank you god that they're 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 clothed in their right mind we have to access the spirit of God with praise with honor 
with exhortation, lifting up. Thank you, God, that, my, that I have filling in my legs. Thank you that I have a car. I thank you that the bus continues to run. Come on in the room. Thank you that when I hit this light switch, the lights came on. Because somebody somewhere is sitting in the dark and they still thanking the God. They're still thanking God. We have to know how to access, enter into his gates with thanksgiving. Okay, so we're worrying about nothing. We're praying about everything. Literally, I stayed with a friend and she had bed bugs. And I was like, oh my Lord Jesus, I didn't have nowhere else to go. I was homeless with my children. I didn't have anywhere else to go. Baby, I believe God. Come on in the room. I believe him for everything. I looked up a natural remedy, what bed bugs don't like, okay? I made, concocted it in my little water bottle. Some alcohol, some um, tea tree oil, some lavender. And then I put some of my blessed oil in there because I truly believe at the name of Jesus. Come on in the room. Atmospheres have to shift. Baby, I sprayed and I prayed. I sprayed and I prayed. Three days. I vacuumed every day. I prayed and I sprayed. She ain't see another bed bug. They tell me that cost you thousands of dollars. Baby, I'm trying to tell you when you pray about everything. When you pray about everything, it shifts the atmosphere. You have to grow in your Christian walk to that area where you're not worried. You're not burdened down. You're not bowed down. We already know that you will be persecuted for righteousness. When you understand that, you don't take it personal anymore. It's not about me. You're not arguing with me. This battle ain't flesh and blood. You're, it's, it's the enemy that lives in you that's arguing with the, with the God, the spirit of God that lives in me. Or the, the enemy that's borrowing you for a brief moment. You don't have to be consumed with the things that are going on around you. I'm trying to tell you. Verse 7 says, Then you will experience God's peace. Come on in the room. That is how we access the peace of God. Then you will experience God's peace, which exceeds everything we can understand. People will say, I can't believe it. She's homeless. I'm telling you, this, this is real life because I still don't have my own home. I live with my sister. Thank God. And I'm, it is a blessed situation, but it wasn't blessed going in. I'm just telling you. But this is the thing. My mama calls me all the time. She's like, I just want you to get settled. I just want you. Baby, I'm peaceful. I'm happy. I'm in a comfortable place because I understand something. All things work together for the good of those that love the Lord. It's working for me. So either this is working for me or I'm working for it. Come on in the room. One way or the other, it's not overtaking me because I prayed about it. I believe God in his word. He said in his word that if I be about his business, that he would be about my business. So I believe him at his word. And when you are truly about the business of the Lord, you ain't got to worry. I ain't worried. I ain't scared. I can't, I can't be bothered because I know that God is with me. Because he said it in his word. We forget that sometimes and we let loneliness take us over. I don't want to be lonely. God said he'd never leave you nor forsake you. He said he'd never leave you nor forsake you. He said he would never leave. Do you believe God? Do you believe God? You have to believe him at his word. I'm telling you, this is how you access the peace that surpasses understanding. But people forfeit that. They forfeit their birthright. Because they don't want to be lonely, so they settle for people that don't want to treat them right. They settle for those that aren't good to their soul, to their spirit, that are sending them to a burning hell. I'm telling you what I lived. Because when I, when I hit rock bottom, because we've been there. I remember hitting rock bottom and being on my floor, crying, feeling like that the whole world was coming down around me. I didn't call on the Lord. I called on a boo. And when my boo came, that worked out for a little while but it still crumbled eventually because I didn't reach to the right source for help. You have to know where your source comes from because God said he'd never leave you nor forsake you. My boo didn't say that. We have to really tap into the spirit of God and know that when he says it in his word that he means it, he ain't playing about you. He loves you. When we really understand God's love, we won't continue to settle. When we really go through the process of being processed through the love of God, you won't keep being in these bad relationships. I'm trying to tell you because when you go through the process of loneliness, it's necessary. You're going to go through it. People walk away because everybody doesn't want to live a righteous life. If you have not lost some friends and you've completely changed your life from old to new and everybody came with you and they ain't saved, I'm concerned if you're really shifted. 
because when you shift your old life some old things will stay behind that's why the bible says old things are passed away old things are passed away even some family members didn't understand whenever the lord changed my life but i could not worry about that my commitment to the lord had to be greater than my commitment to people you cannot be a people pleaser I have to believe that God is God. I have to believe that the word of God is real. I have to believe that he is with me. And greater is he that is in me than he that lives in the world. So when God lives in you, you respond differently. You act differently. You do not have to worry about the things that are going on around you because you understand that this is just happening i'm just going through the motion but i already know at the end i already know how the story ends when you already know how the story ends the small things start they don't bother you my daughter was getting bullied at school i had to handle that thing differently i'm not gonna worry oh my god i can't believe it why would she treat my child like that because my child is a child of god it's going to happen do not teach your children to be victims you're not a victim you're a victor through christ you go in there, the Bible says everywhere that your feet shall tread shall be called holy ground. When you go in there, baby, let me tell you something. You have to know how to teach your children the ways of the Lord. When I send my child into school, she's covered into the blood. And everywhere that her feet shall tread shall be called holy ground. She's calling a ceasefire on the devil just walking in that building. Because she is covered by the blood of Jesus. She is covered by the blood of Jesus. Yes, God. I'm not worried. I told her, I said, listen, that little girl that's bothering you, pray for her compliment her the bible says pray for those that mistreat you you have to teach your children these things it's it's hard sometimes learning to transition from walking by sight to walking by faith because walking by sight is oh i'm gonna go up in that school because they got me messed up walking by faith is let me tell you something little girl i'm praying for you i pray your faith don't fail baby because i want her to be a praying spirit of god yes lord she's gonna be able to command out demons right there in the school building i'm not gonna train her to be a wimp the bible says no cowards will inherit the kingdom of god i'm not playing you can't play about it you have to on purpose be intentional about the way you're training up your children Yes, I'm there. And yes, I went to the school, but I also taught my child the equipment that she needed, the tools that she needed, because at the name of Jesus, demons, do, they tremble. I don't care if they're five years old, two years old, 12 years old, 15 years old, 32 years old. I don't care if they got a gun, a knife, a rifle. I don't care what they got at the name of Jesus. When you believe God, at the name of Jesus, demons tremble. Devils flee, sickness bows down, depression goes away, anxiety back. Come on in the room. You have to really believe God and His Word. You have to believe Him. It's all about our belief. It's all about you have to really trust it and put them to the test. Hebrews, let's go to Hebrews 11 and 6. Hebrews 11 and 6. And it is impossible. It is impossible to please God without faith. Come on, you can't even pray without faith. When you're praying without faith, you're not even you're not going to access that realm. When you expect God to show up, I expect God to show up on my behalf. I expect him to show up. I expect for my child to be able to go into that school and to be able to learn and to be able to come out at the end of that school day. I'm not expecting anything different. The Bible says a thousand shall fall at my left, 10,000 at my right, but no harm shall come near my tent. You have to know how to decree and declare a thing over your children. I draw a bloodline around that school right now in the name of Jesus. Any school that I can think of, I'm drawing a bloodline around it. Stop warring in the wrong way yes i want you to war in the physical but i also want you to war in the supernatural we are believers of christ he can do all things or can he not you have to either believe it or you don't believe it he, he can do it i'm believing god to do some miracles so amazing that people drop their guns they come to rob you and they drop their guns because of the light that lives inside of you because it's just desperation people are desperate so as a, as a child of God, when I get desperate, I'm not going to go to the strip club. I'm not going to call a sugar daddy. I'm not going to go do this or that. I'm going to get on my knees. I'm going to get on my face. I'm going to pray. I'm going to say, God, I need you right now. Mm -hmm. Because people that don't know God, that's how they war. They get on the phone. They smoke a blunt. They call their ex. 
they lay down with somebody for some money but when you desperate and you put that thing you say God I'm trusting you with everything in me I don't know what to do right now I'm used to calling Tyrone but I ain't gonna call Tyrone because I just heard about you I heard that at the name of Jesus demons tremble I heard that you said that you shall supply all of my needs according to your riches and glory and God I need something right now I need something. I'm not going to go to the left. I'm not going to go to the right. I'm going to be still in my faith. The word of God says, be still and know that I am God. Be still in your faith. You have to be still in your faith and know that God is going to show up. He said he wouldn't leave you. He's with you. Be still in your faith and know that he is going to show up in your situation. I'm talking to somebody right now that is going through some things. Be still. Do not let your faith fail. He will show up. When I tell you, when I tell you every situation that, is, that I've been in that's been a tight spot, he showed up. But how would I be able to tell you that he can work out impossible situations if I've never been through any? God is our strong tower. He said in our weakness, he'll be our strong tower in our weakness but we have to allow ourselves to get weak and submit unto him and to become humble and say God I need you right now if you don't show up I don't know what I'm gonna do I'm between a rock and a hard place I used to do this and I used to do that but God I'm trying to live this life that is pleasing unto you God open up a door make a way make a way I need to see your glory I need to see your power I need to see what it is that you can do if you're looking for a man in the earth come on in the room God is looking for some people that are ready to say, if you're looking for a man in the earth, I'm standing right here. I'm in need of a miracle. I'm going to tell somebody about it. That is why I'm so passionate. That's why I'm so passionate because I've done this so many times. I rely on God. I say, God, you know what? For a while I was praying, I want nobody but God miracles. I had to stop praying that for a minute because when you ask for nobody but God miracles, you will be in a nobody but God against the wall situation where man says you're not going to make it. Whenever you run down your credential list, you shouldn't even be where you are today. Come on in the room. I'm trying to tell you that God is trying to do something through you, but will you let him do it? You have to go through the process. You have to trust him. You have to turn out, tune out every other ear. You have to tune out the things that are telling you you can't do it. You have to tune out the things that are telling you you will never be it. You have to tune out your past. Because God knows your past. He's going to use your past. I truly believe. Come on in the room. I truly believe that the Bible says, okay, everywhere that my feet shall tread shall be called holy ground. So this is how I take that. Everywhere that I used to go, the strip clubs, come on in the room. All the gay lovers that I used to sleep with, come on in the room. All the places that I used to go. I truly believe that because my feet touch those places that I have dominion over those things. I'm going to be able to go back into those same arenas, those same circles, cast out demons, cast out devils. People will be healed, set free, and delivered. God knows your past. He's seen the things you've been through. He's going to take your mess and make it your message. You won't even look like what you've been through. You won't even sound like where you've been. People will look at you and say, I don't know what's different about you. They'll call up their friends and say, man, I called her and I was like, girl, come on, let's smoke a blunt. And she told me no. So I said, I'll call her next week because, girl, you know she go through that every now and again. But one day you're going to get it for real. One day you'll know it's going to be no. Baby, my no is so no right now. I had an ex. Hit me up in my inbox. Come on in the room. Had to ask hit me up in my inbox. Talking about, hey, baby, I'm thinking about you. Can I call you? Are you dating somebody? I said, yes, call me. I want you to call me. Here's my phone number. Glory to God. I want to tell you what the Lord has done in my life. I want to tell you how he's changed me, set me free, delivered me. You don't have to live that way no more. You was not born gay. You think you were born gay? You wasn't born gay, baby. Sometimes it's generational curses. It came before you. That's why you feel like that you were born that way, but you wasn't born that way. Call I want to tell you about the Lord. She didn't call. <laughs> but that is how you shut the enemy down. You do not cower down when the enemy shows up. Your spirit man should grow inside of you. But how do you grow? You get in your word. You have to know how to talk back to the devil. You have to know how to put him in his place. You have to know how to rebuke him. Let me tell you something about mental illness. Mental illness ain't nothing but devils and demons in people's minds and in their heads and in their spirits. And, their, and some they drink in their body and they drink and it brings out other things. But when you learn how to talk to that thing and say, you know what? I rebuke you. Voice, I'm hearing voices. No, it's like, that is not of God. Then told me, jump off a bridge. I rebuke that in the name of Jesus. I rebuke that I will not be afraid in my own body. I will not be depressed in my own body. God has not given me the spirit of fear, but of love and of power. And of a sound mind. 
He wouldn't have said it in his word if he didn't mean it. God has not given you the spirit of fear, but of love and of power and a sound mind. I'm telling you what I live, okay? Because when the Lord changed my life and delivered me and set me free, the devil came for my mind. He came for my mind. He started making me afraid and scared. And it was some crazy things going on for about a whole week. I was hearing voices and all kind of stuff was going on. But let me tell you something. I began to continue to soak in the word. I had to tune out every other voice. I stayed in my word. Whatever was bothering me, it was trying to make me afraid to read my Bible. But no, you're not going to make me afraid to read my Bible. Because see, this is the answer. This is the answer. So I continue to press in. I continue to read the word of God. I continue to keep my atmosphere oily. I kept my church music playing. I kept a song playing in my spirit. When I would feel something bothering me or something made me uncomfortable, I started saying, Jesus, 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 Jesus. At that name, the atmosphere must shift. At that name, the atmosphere must shift. Then I begin to speak that over my life. God has not given me the spirit of fear. I will not be afraid. God has not given me the spirit of fear. I will not be afraid. My God has not given me the spirit of fear. See, my daddy, I, I can't remember all the different things they put on him. But see, his mama might didn't know how to tell him, son, you rebuke that in the name of Jesus. But I rebuked it for me. I'm not going down that road. I'm not going to the loony being not on the watch of the Lord. Come on in the room. God has not given you the spirit of fear, but of love power and a sound mind it's real he will regulate your mind i'm trying to tell you it was three days of <laughs> i wrote a couple of poems while i was going through it. it was it was uncomfortable but i continued to call on the name of jesus and i i expected him to show up when you call him do, do you expect him to show up are you saying god is oh i mean i get i mean if you got kind of you know maybe show up no lord i'm gonna need you right now I'm pleading my case. I heard about you. I want to know you for myself. I want to come into relationship with you. I'm tired of living how I used to live. I'm tired of the voices in my head telling me that I'm not enough. I'm tired of the generational curses that have plagued my family. My grandma was a drunk. My mom was a drunk. My daddy's a drunk. I don't want to live this way. Nobody showed me the right way to live. Nobody told me about you, God. And if they told me about you, they went to church on Sunday and they were still sinning. They were still fornicating. They were still rolling up blunts on the way to church, back from church on Sunday, on it's Sunday evening, Saturday evening, Friday evening. God, I want to experience the wholeness and the fullness and the joy that you say that you have. I want to access the peace that surpasses understanding. I want to know about that kind of life. It's real. It is real. It is so real. But I wouldn't be able to tell you these things. I wouldn't be able to tell you that he's a mind regulator had my mind not went well. So it's just a test. It's just a test. I don't care what the situation is. I wouldn't be able to tell you that he's a healer if I hadn't been paralyzed on my whole left side. Come on in the room. I wouldn't be able to tell you that he's a healer if I hadn't been paralyzed, waist down, off and on for three years in the bed. I wouldn't be able to tell you that he's a mind regulator if I had not lost my whole memory. My whole memory. I couldn't even remember my last name. I couldn't remember who the president was. I couldn't remember who, what year we were in. I couldn't remember to even take my medication. I would be in so much pain and the pill would be in my hand and I wouldn't even remember to take the pill that was in my hand. I wouldn't be able to tell you that he's a mind regulator. Come on in the room. If I had not experienced it, it's just a test. It's just a test. Be careful who you think the answer is in because the only answer is in Christ Jesus. When you lay before that throne, Second Corinthians, Second Chronicles 7 and 14 says, If my people who are called by my name shall humble themselves, get low, humble themselves. God, I need you. I don't know how I got in this situation, or maybe I do know how I got in this situation. Confess your sins to the Lord. Let him know. Because confession is good for the soul. There's deliverance in, in, in testimony given. There's deliverance when you, when you say what is going on. The devil don't want you to say it because when you cannot tell your testimony, you ain't free from it. I need you to know that. So many people that, oh, you know, I ain't never told nobody about that. Then you ain't free because I tell it from the sun up to the sun down to the roof to the ground. Tell your testimony. There's somebody else's freedom that's locked up in your testimony. And the devil still got you. He can still call you on a late night hour because you ain't called it out. But when you call it out, you put a light on it. You put a light on it. And yep, you're going to be tested. But how you know you delivered if you ain't been tested? You got to pass the test. 
you have to know that the answer is in Jesus. If my people who are called by my name shall humble themselves and pray. Seek my face. He says, seek him. Not seek somebody else. Seek God. Get in the word of God. Get in a church. I love Miracle Life. They are awesome. They on Terry Road in Louisville, Kentucky. I am in love times 10. Um, another awesome church that I love is called oh new beginnings no what is that church called it's on 17th and jefferson in louisville i can't think of the name right now but it's an awesome church seek the lord okay if my people who are called by not my name will humble themselves pray seek my face here comes the next part because this is what people don't understand turn from their wicked ways it's not enough to go to church on sunday it's not enough to read your Bible. You have to literally turn from your wicked ways. Get out of the bed of fornication. Put down the drinks. Put down the blunts. Put down the cussing. Come on in the room. Turn from your wicked ways. And you have to shut those doors. Let me say that too. You can't be no coward. Because you wasn't no coward when you got in these things. You have to close the door. You have to call up the person and say, hey, I can't do this anymore. Don't keep calling me. You do not have to wait for a response. Hang up the phone. Okay, this is real talk. My daughter had me so tickled. It's a little boy in her school that's friends with her. And she said they wasn't doing the right thing. She said, Mom, I had to tell him we can't be friends no more. So I text him. She said, and then I blocked him. I did not wait for a response. Nobody is in on your, on your deliverance. You don't have to have confirmation from someone. Do you agree on me getting delivered? No, you don't need that. On purpose, you come on in the room and you say, Lord, I can't take this no more. I'm tired of living like this. I'm tired of my children seeing me live like this. This is how I had to get my deliverance. I had to get honest with the Lord. You have to get honest because he said, when you turn from your wicked ways, then, come on, here's the keys. We coming on in the room. Yes, God. Here's the keys. He said, then I would hear from heaven. And I would forgive your sins. Forgiveness comes through this process. Yes, ma'am, on purpose. Come on in the room. He said he'll forgive your sins. And he will heal your land. Y'all, I am a living, breathing, walking testimony that he will heal your land. He will heal your land when you turn from your wicked ways. When I say, God, I, I'm tired of being this way. And let me tell you this. The, the word of God will interrupt your life. It'll interrupt your plans. This word right here is interruption to somebody's life right now. I mean, you probably had plans for tonight. You had called somebody like, girl, I'll be over there. Or, uh, uh, sir, I'll be over there. Listen, the word of God will, will interrupt your life. I was married to a whole woman. Moved out of town. We was living together. Life was fine. When the, when the Lord interrupted my life, life was fine. She was always amazing to me. Gave me anything that I wanted. Would have gave me the moon if she could have gave me the moon. But when the word of God goes forth, there's a moment of grace. This is a moment of grace on this word tonight. It's a moment of grace. When you hear the word of God and you turn from your wicked ways, he doesn't have to force his hand. Because the word of God will not return void. The Bible says, train up a child in the way that they shall go. And when they get older, they will not depart. If that word was planted, that seed was planted inside of you, the word is in you. It's not going to return. Boy, he's going to get out of you his purpose for your life. So you can either give on up while there's a moment of grace. And let me tell you why it's so important to come out when it's grace on the moment. That means without destruction happening. Okay. The Lord, when it was time for me to part ways from that relationship, the Lord told me to leave on a Friday night. He said, leave today. I was comfortable, okay? Comfortable. I knew I was leaving. My stuff was packed. But I was like, oh, I'll leave in the morning. One day won't hurt. It almost cost me my life. And I don't say this to ever slander anybody. I only say this so that you can understand the testimony and how important that grace is. I didn't leave that Friday night and that Saturday morning. She had never put her hands on me ever in the whole time we was together. She would not let anybody else. She wouldn't let nobody put their mouth on me. Okay. And when I was leaving. She let the devil borrow her for 10 seconds. And then the Bible says do not provoke anyone to anger. So I could have actually, now that I, when I look back at it, because you got to be honest. And people can't get delivered if you're not honest. When I look back at it, she was angry. She was already angry. I should have just left. I didn't argue with her. I didn't do nothing with her. But I, my presence was still there. I should have just left. But since I didn't leave, 
on Friday when the Lord told me to leave. And since I was in my feelings and I I just wanted to stand my ground, I almost lost my life. I could have lost my life. It could have been really ugly. But God is so good. He's so gracious. He's so merciful. We got into a scuffle. I didn't fight her back. I've never been in a fight in my whole life. And she was choking me. And the, and the devil said, take your elbow and ram it in her face. The thought came in my mind. Let me tell you this. Let's put a little pin right there. You do not have to take every suggestion that comes into your mind from the devil. You don't have to take it. Now, the Lord said rest. And I just let my whole body rest. And she was just tossing me around like a rag doll. She was choking me. It got crazy. But God is so good. Because I was obedient to him in that moment. It was like I felt something gently put its hands around my neck. And she was choking me. And I know she was choking me hard because my contacts had rolled in the back of my eyes. I know it was real. But I couldn't feel it. And when she got off of me, when I said her daughter pulled her off of me, and when that happened, when I tell you, I fell on my knees. And I threw my hands up to the Lord. And I said, God, I'm sorry because I put myself in this situation. I'm sorry that I went against your word. I'm sorry that I went against your way. I'm sorry that I went against your will for my life. We got to get desperate. We got to get honest with the Lord because he already knows. Who are you hiding from? You can't hide from God because he sees. He knows all. He said he'd never leave you nor forsake you. He's been with you. He sent angels to protect you, not for your own good. Come on in the room. But because he wanted to get the glory out of your life. He didn't let that thing take you out. He didn't let it take you out. And I love outrageous people. I love them. I love the outlandish ones, the gay boys that are loud and outran and they, they wear the wild color hair. Baby, because if they ever get a hold of the word of God, come on in the room. They're going to be on five times ten. Yes, God. You have to know that you don't judge anybody. Because you do not know what situation they come through. And because they've been brought through all of those things. Because the Lord brought you through everything he's brought you through. Because you survived the rape that you was in. Because you survived the car wreck that you was in. Come on in the room. No weapon formed against you shall prosper. It ain't going to prosper. It ain't prospered this far. It's not going to prosper. It's only a test. Don't let your faith fail. It's only a test. I don't care what it is. I don't care if your marriage is in trouble. It's only a test. You have to get around some prayer warriors. You got to get around some people that believe God. Let me tell you something. My mother told me the other day, she was like, I was a little worried because I saw your ex coming around. I said, baby, the only reason my ex is coming around because I'm, I'm, I'm praying on her head. I'm praying for her. I want her to be healed, changed, set free, and delivered. I want her to experience the, the presence of the Lord in her life for real. So don't worry about me. I ain't worried. I ain't scared. The Bible says... The prayers of the righteous will be answered because the prayers of the righteous will save sinners because their hands are pure. I keep my hands clean because of the people I pray for. I want it to come to pass. I want my ex-husband to be saved. I want him to give his life to the Lord. I want him to be changed. He'll set free and delivered. Every person that comes across the threshold of my salon, I want him to be changed. He'll set free and delivered. I want him to be better when they leave. I want him to be uplifted when they leave. I don't want depression to take them out. Come on in the room. I don't want anxiety to take them out. I want my children to be safe at school. I want my children to be safe when they go out into the world. I keep my hands clean for those reasons. Yes, I still know how to call somebody and smoke a blunt. Yes, I still know how to go get liquor. Yes, I can call any of my exes and we could go down and it would go down times 10. But I keep my hands clean because I believe the word of God. When you truly believe, it adjusts how you live. It adjusts the things you pray about. It adjusts how you respond to conflict. I love conflict. I love it because it's only a situation to show God that lives in you. But if you bow down and start arguing with the people, cussing with the people, getting upset, angry, burned down, y'all both stressed out, y'all both got headaches, y'all both got to take a high blood pressure pill. What? I know God. And he said that it's working for me. He said all things work together for the good of those that love the Lord. Do you believe it or do you not? It's working for me. Those tough situations, the people on your job that wear your whole soul out. It's working for you. And when you come through it, you'll be like, man, I thought that was hard. But I want to tell you this. <laughs> you only come through one test to go into another test. It's just training. Your faith is constantly in the gym. It's exercising. 
exercising. You exercising your faith. Come on, you exercising your faith. Yes, you got to exercise it. So then when you go out into the world and you have these situations, you be like, you know what? Shoo, she just had said that on Bible study last night that it's working for me. Because this lady show is getting on my nerves. But I'm going to just pray because she said pray about nothing. All right. She said pray about Pray about everything. Worry about nothing. So let me just go ahead and pray about this. Lord, help her, oh God. Because you never know. People only have bad attitudes because they're going through something. Because they've been through something. Because they do not know that God is able to do exceedingly, abundantly above all that we can ask or think. I don't care how long they've been in church. I have seen pastors that do not believe God. It's shocking to me. When I tell them stuff, they be like, yeah, I know, but I'm not talking about that. What? What is going on right now? You either believe the word of God or you don't believe the word of God. I believe it with everything in me. I believe that every word I speak out of my mouth that comes out of this Bible will come to pass because he said it in his word. Because he said it in his word. I believe it. I stand on it. Be still and know that I am God. When I tell y'all I'm not worried about these school shootings, I'm praying. Are y'all praying? They took pride of school, but they can't take the pride of you. They can't take the pride of your children. Baby, I draw a bloodline around them every single day. I plead the blood of Jesus over your children. Plead the blood over your babies when they sleep. I pre plead the blood of che Jesus over my children. I do not want them to go through the prodigal son experience. They do not have to go out into the world and see all kind of ignorant things and get their whole life dirty and a mess. To know that God is able because they've seen me do it because I'm transparent because I tell them where I've been. They've seen their father. They've seen the things he's done. When you live that transparent life, people can be changed. I was getting my toes done today. Just getting a pedicure. And because the word of God is in me, it comes out of me. I don't, I don't schedule, okay, at 3 o'clock I'm going to talk about the Lord. It just comes out of me. So I'm getting my toes done and, and I get a phone call. And I, I was sharing the love of God with a lady on the mm -hmm. phone that was about a hair appointment. We started talking about the Lord. And then the lady that was getting her toes, that was doing my toes, she, she shared, you know, some things with me. And it is just amazing how your testimony unlocks somebody else's life. Faith comes by hearing. Hearing by the word of God. Somebody else can believe they can do it because they heard you tell your testimony. Who have you told your testimony to? Who have you shared the love of God with? Who have you told that, hey, I was raised in a rough situation. It was hard. A lot of nights we went without food. I do not look at people anymore. I used to look at people and be like, oh, that's so sad. I don't look at it like that no more because I understand that it's working for them. I understand that God said he'd never leave them nor forsake them. So he's with them through the tough spot. Sometimes he's trying to get your attention. He just wants you to come unto him. He wants you to draw close unto him. He wants you to lay at his feet. He wants to love on you. He wants to show you how he's able to do it. He wants to do it for you. You just won't let him. I'm telling you, I was sick for three years. And the Lord showed me how every time I got to rock bottom, I didn't call on him. I called on my exes. I called on the nexus. But when you get to the bottom and you truly call on the Lord, when I tell you, it is amazing. I love it. When I, I walk around my salon and, and it's and I'm continued to be in awe because the word of God is true. When I left, the Lord told me to move to Florida and give away everything. And he told me because I did that, because I was obedient, he told me he would give me walk into blessings. That's what he said. Okay. Now you have to understand that there's a waiting period between the prophecy and the promise. Between the words spoken over your life and it actually coming to pass. Now, it was three years between the prophecy and the promise. But when I looked in the salon window at this salon that I'm at right now, everything was fully furnished. The thought came to my mind. Lord, you said you give me walking to blessings. You are really real. <laughs> I mean, not that I doubt you, but you are like, really? Something that he told you years ago. I want to tell you that the promise is still good. The promise is still good. Come on in the room. The promise is still good, but you have to be in the correct position. You have to be in relationship to receive your blessings because if you are not in relationship and you are not in the right place, you may waste it. He's not going to keep letting you waste his blessings. He's not going to keep on giving you an audience to build and to turn against the world. 
the go turn against him. He wants you to lift his name up. He wants you to give glory to him through your lifestyle choices, through the way you dress, through the words that you speak out of your mouth. You have to purify that tongue. It waters down your testimony when you curse and you tell about the word of God. You got to purify your tongue because your mouth is the speech of God. Your words are the words of God. Think about that. On purpose. The Bible says blessings and cursings do not flow from the same mouth. Pray about it. Put duct tape on it. If you can't say nothing, babe, put duct tape. Because the Lord's purifying my I don't got nothing good to say. Even for gossiping. Even for gossiping. I have to really think about this. Because I work at a hair salon and I love to tell stories. And so I have to be like, you know, is this gossip or is this storytelling or is this giving glory to God? And I said, okay, this is how I have to filter it. Is it going to give glory to God? Is it going to be, in a, is it going to be a testimony that I'm going to be able to tell out of this? Am I going to pray about this when I get finished talking about it? Or am I just be like, girl, let me tell you what happened, girl. Woo, honey, let me tell you. That ain't getting nobody changed that's not helping the situation so if you're gonna the bible does say go to get go to each other talk about it cast your burdens upon each other so you can talk about these things but i need you to pray about it also and sometimes we have to intercede on somebody's behalf because people are so busy you know oh girl i prayed i just keep praying i just keep praying i want them to get changed i want them to get healed i want them to get delivered have you spoke the word of god to them have you shared the word of god to them have you show show the glory of god through your life can they look at your life without any words and see that you love God by the way you carry yourself? Without any words. If you couldn't speak any words for a whole week, would people see the glory of the Lord on your life by the places you drive your car to? By the things that you look on Facebook at? By the music selections that you listen to? I mean, if you could say no words, you couldn't say any words for a whole week, would people know that you love God? I just want y'all to ponder on that for a minute because it's important I had a young girl get to sit in my chair the other day and she said it's a girl in my school and she we both love God and we both go to church but when she go to church she just I mean when she go to school she just forgets that she loves God you can't forget that you love God because you don't forget the people that you love you honor the people that you love and you know and you have to also remember you have to be obedient to the will of God and to the word of God every time I correct my child I mean literally every time I correct my child I think about dang that's how God feels about me he does he does not when he says something he expects me to do it when I tell my child to do something I expect her to do it because I expect her to do it <laughs> That's the same way God is. If he said don't do it in this word, if it says do not fornicate, that means leave your underwear up until you are married. Glory to God. I'm just telling you what the word of God says. If it says in his word that you are not supposed to be gay, I'm going to need you to say, you know what? I don't even understand this. For some reason, I feel like I was born this way. I've been having these feelings. And you might have felt like that because generational curses are real. Sexual perversion of the mind is real. It didn't start with you, your mother, your father. So it came before you. People don't like to talk about it, baby, but I got to tell you the truth. I got to tell you the truth. When your parents are in fornication and you were born out of wedlock, you already were birthed into the spirit of sexual perversion. It is what it is. That's why you have to get your life in alignment. If you've had children out of wedlock, you've already set them up at a disadvantage. You have to get your life in alignment with the Lord and you have to plead the blood. You got to give your whole life to the Lord because your children are at stake. You had them out of wedlock. You were not in covenant in a marriage relationship with the Lord and a spouse of opposite sex that the Lord divinely give, gave you. Then you are already setting them up for failure and you don't know what will be birthed out of that. Okay, they might just have, they might continue in fornication they might have a pornography addiction they might be in homosexuality they might go into bestiality but it all still falls under sexual immorality i need y'all to understand how serious when i really thought about that baby i had to get my life straight because i don't want my children to go through that i want my son to have a beautiful wife and to be married i don't want him to struggle with lust because i didn't kill that demon that was living inside of me you gotta let those devils die 
They cannot continue to go on to the next generation, into the next generation, into the next generation. Not on my watch, because I love my babies too much to make them fight these devils. That was on my back. No, you got to go. Every single one of you. You got to learn how to pray. You got to learn how to cast down demons. You got to learn how to call that thing out for what it is. Stop sugarcoating it and call it for what it is. Deliverance is real. I am a living, breathing, walking testimony. And I didn't get my deliverance in the church house. I didn't get my deliverance from a man of God or a woman of God. I got my deliverance through the word of God and through direct relationship. The Lord woke me up out of my sleep one night. I was at a friend's house, sleep on her couch. And she said, I woke up and screamed, God. All I know is something grabbed me. Something touched me. And so I popped up and I started praying and I started praying and I started casting out those things. And I just got so honest with the Lord. I don't even know where it was coming from. Clearly it was the Holy Spirit purging me. Because I just started talking. I was like, Lord, I don't want this nasty devil to be on me no more. The spirit of homosexuality has to leave my life. The spirit of fornication has to leave my life. The spirit of lust has to leave my life. You can't have me. You can't have my children. You can't have my generation. You can't have nobody that sat in my church. You can't have nobody I love, nobody I used to love, nobody that loved me right now in the name of Jesus. And loose your hold off of me. You got to know how to pray. Next thing I know, I'm outside throwing up. And then I, then the lady's house that I was in, I thank her today for this because it blessed my soul. She called her pastor, honey, and they took me down to the church. It was 6 a.m. in the morning, December 17th. That water was so cold, baby. They took me down that water, and that water was cold. But when I came up out of that water, that water my whole body started, heat started rising from my feet up. Come on in the room. God is real. He is real if you want to tap in that peace that surpasses understanding if you want to be free from the things that continue to call your name and continue to take you down that continue to consume your money let me talk about this because some things are like oh well it's not really a sin if it's consuming your money it's coming for you the devil comes to kill steal and destroy so you think it's harmless but it's consuming your money even a shopping addiction when I look back over my life and I think about how much how much money I spent on clothes and hair and makeup how much money I spent? And I'm in this. I'm in the beauty business, and I'm like, oh, you know, well, that's for me. No, I didn't need 250 pairs of shoes. I just didn't need that. If it's consuming your money, if it's consuming your time, because once you give your life to the Lord, sometimes the devil will consume your time. He'll have you on Facebook for hours, scrolling, commenting on stuff, people putting posts on our time about some, what you think about this? I don't know what it says. Something they put up. What y'all think? Let's talk about it. Let's debate. No, I don't have time to do that. I'm too busy working on purpose. I'm too busy working on life. I'm too busy trying to make sure my children are raised the right way. I'm too busy trying to teach my children the ways of the Lord so they know how to fight against the devil when they go out into this world. I ain't got time to be on her time about, do you think my hair is better long or short? Girl, I don't care if your hair is long or short. You got some hair. Glory to God. On purpose, let's be mindful how we speak, how we how we spend our time. The people that we spend our time with. You do not have time debating whether God is real. Let me just say that. I don't even know where that came from. Clearly that's for somebody. You don't have time debating whether God is real or he's not real. If somebody is still struggling with that, you pray for them, you say what you need to say, and then you keep it moving. You don't have time to spend on the phone four hours telling somebody, well, no, I want to tell you this. Well, no, I know you're not listening. You leave it right there. You pray about it and you keep it pushing. And watch the Lord work in that situation. Trust me. Every situation that I continue to pray about, I believe God. And when I get weak, I know some people to call on that are able to pray with me. I had a situation, my very first unsatisfied customer in 24 years of combing hair. I've never had one. I was devastated. I never had an unsatisfied customer. But I called on my auntie. Not only is she a businesswoman, but she's a woman of God. She talked, she talked me through it and she prayed me through it. I handled it with grace. And then, this is how you know you handle it right. I was so proud of myself. I said, God, you're so good. I love the spirit of God that lives in me. Because I handled it correctly, the lady reached back out to me a couple of days later and was like, hey, I just want to tell you, I was thinking of you, you know, have a blessed day. Because I handled it correctly. God is good and he is able. He's only putting you in or allowing tough situations so that he gets the glory out of them. Don't resent the pit. Don't resent the tough situation. Don't resent the, un resent the uncomfortable situation. Don't resent it. Press in. Philippians 4 and 6. Worry about nothing. Pray about everything. Enter into his gates with thanksgiving. That's Bible study tonight, you all. I hope you got a word tonight. I hope that it was actually really touching. I hope that you're actually able to grow with it. This word has to become your flesh. 
time to stop playing church. It's time to stop playing with the word of God and get real about this thing because the Bible said that Christ is coming back for a church without spot or wrinkle. That means he's not going to take you in your dirty state. It's in the word. He's coming back for a church without spot nor wrinkle. How do you iron out those wrinkles? Through the word of God. Through living a righteous life. Through living in ways that is pleasing unto God. Hebrews 12 and 14 says, work at living in peace. Work at it. It's not going to come easy. You didn't, you haven't been doing this. You've been a hellraiser your whole life. Work at living in peace with everyone. Not just the people you like, everyone. The people that get on your nerves, start with them first. Work at living in peace and work at living a holy life. Glory to God. Work at living a holy life every day, not just on Sundays or Saturdays. For those who are not holy will not see the Lord. Sit. That's all I got. Only the righteous shall see God. So if this message touched you tonight, if this message you found yourself somewhere in here and you realized that you were going down the wrong path, let's pray. Let's pray because we want to stay in right standing. And when we hear the word of God, there is a response that you have to line up in. There is a moment of grace right now. I'm trying to tell whoever is on this broadcast that is in a situation right now. There is a moment of grace. The Lord is giving you a way out right now. Dear Heavenly Father, we thank you for this day, God. We thank you for the people that have tuned into this broadcast on tonight, God. We thank you that you are God and God alone. We thank you that we can stand on your word. Lord, teach us to be still in our faith and know that you are God. Lord, we are, we are asking you right now to come back into relationship with us as we tap into your presence. There's somebody right now under the sound of my voice and they've lost relationship with you. They've been in religion. They've been going to church on Sunday and they've been practicing all kinds of different things in the church, but they have not come into relationship. They have not allowed the sanctification process to start. God, I ask that you just bring us back into your presence. Right now, I call heaven down to earth. We call a ceasefire on the devil right now on the attack of the minds of your people right now, God. We call a ceasefire on the devil on the attack of their finances, on the attack of their children. Right now, we plead the blood of Jesus. We plead the blood of Jesus. No hurt, harm, or danger shall come their way, oh God. Lord, keep them. Lord, keep them. Watch over them while they sleep tonight. Go with them through the highways and the byways, oh God. Restore marriages, God. This atmosphere is oily right now. Lord, you said we have not because we ask. And I declare and decree healing in this atmosphere right now. Anybody that is going through something in their body, I decree and declare healing. You said in your word, God, that by your stripes we are healed. Healing is available through the word of God, through the blood of Jesus. Thank you, Jesus, for remission of our sins. Lord, you said, do not judge. Ye without sin cast the first stone. But slightly after that, Lord, you said in your word, go and sin no more. Go and sin no more. God, we thank you for your cleansing blood. We thank you that you are able to wash us. We thank you that you are able to take our mess and make it our message. We thank you that no matter how dirty we are, no matter where we've been in, no matter where we've come from, it does not matter. Because once the blood of Jesus comes in covenant with us, we are new creatures. We are new creatures. Lord, we touch and agree right now for the newness of Christ, leaving the old things in our past. You said old things are passed away. God, I thank you for the life that was just saved. I thank you for somebody that just came back into covenant and just gave their life to you, God. I just laid it on the throne, on the throne room floor. God, I thank you that you're going to do something awesome in their life. Lord, let them see you for who you are. Reveal yourself unto them through their finances. Reveal yourself to them un through their health and their children and their attitude. Let the peace that surpasses all understanding rest and rule and abide in them. God, I know you're able because you've done it for me. Time after time, you are way making God. You are bridge over troubled water. You are a restorer of our soul. God, we thank you on today. We lift your name up high. You are the mighty lion of Judah and the prince of peace. That means you handle the big things and the small things, oh God. We can call on your name and at the name of Jesus, demons tremble and devils flee. Sickness bows down at the name of Jesus. Lord, I speak, I speak health right now, healing in somebody's heart right now. Somebody's dealing with an issue in their heart right now. 
the broken hearted, but I'm standing here to tell you that God is a mender of broken hearts. I've been there. God, I know that you can do it. Be with them in this season. Be a comforter to those that are in bereavement on tonight, Lord. God, we thank you and we believe you. We are standing on your word. God, we thank you. We lift your name and we honor you. And it is so. It is done. And if we believe it, it is so. In Jesus' holy and most precious name, I pray. Amen, amen, and amen. Ooh, I thank y'all for tuning in tonight. The presence of the Lord is in the room. I'm expecting some praise reports. Make sure y'all inbox me, post it on my page, post it on this video. God is going to do some awesome things. He's not a man that he shall lie. Keep your hands clean. Turn from your wicked ways and watch God work. Y'all be blessed and I will see you all next Tuesday night right here. Bible study live. Y'all be blessed.